evil is uh, presented through certain organizations, certain individuals, and they're trying to, through deception, through manipulation, through all kinds of uh, uh, mind fucks, excuse my French, uh, to take over and control us. Control seems to be their game. Uh, their, they, it seems like, uh, you know, when you, when you study super psychopaths or born psychopaths uh, and also some sociopaths, meaning people that are not born like that, but have been so damaged by life that they've turned into the same uh, type of behavior. Control seems to be one of the major things that they need. They need to control. They really get a ma major satisfaction out of it. I, I don't understand it at all. I don't get it. But uh, then again, it's not me who's doing it. So there, there is this, I, I would in my humble opinion, I believe that there is a third world war going on. It's a silent war, but it's an, a super 360 degree attack on humanity where they're trying to take over and control all aspects of life. It goes Ole Damigo, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while. It's been a long while, yeah. And by the way, I, I uh, the first, the last time I saw you talking uh, was um, on Fülmich, on Dr. Fülmich, the, the lawyer okay. with the Corona Investigative Committee. Amazing talk. So you're one of the I don't know 150 like uh, you know super renowned experts, insider whistleblowers, whatever you know. It's just so many uh, experts, and this grand jury proceeding that's it's sort of a model proceeding that's not taking place. It's I think it's overdue because uh, for the first time, you know, uh, all the criminality and, uh, you know, they should know these, these, whoever these people are who, you know, who are instigating and, and propagating and, and, and causing so much suffering and collateral damages uh, with what, you know, with this whole pandemic, <laughs> as we call it. So, Ole, um, I want to talk to you about, uh, of course, Bitcoin, because that's the focus of my podcast. And since you already posted something and you've done a lot of research on, I mean, I know you are like a super expert on false flag. So are we like in the super matrix of all false flags now? Or, or is it just a fall, like a gigant, gigantic false flag to distract from all the other smaller false flags? I mean, it, what, what is what the fuck is going on? Well, 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 that was an easy question. So give me six hours and I'll do my best to explain. <laughs> <clears throat> Very good question. Not so easy to answer, but I think what is going on is that uh, uh, there is a spiritual fight between good and evil. And it's like a gladiator game. And uh, uh, if you evil is uh, presented through certain organizations, certain individuals, and they're trying to, through deception, through manipulation, through all kinds of uh, uh, mind fucks, excuse my French, uh, to take over and control us. Control seems to be their game. Uh, their, they, it seems like, uh, you know, when you, when you study super psychopaths or born psychopaths uh, and also some sociopaths, meaning people that are not born like that, but have been so damaged by life that they've turned into the same uh, type of behavior. Control seems to be one of the major things that they need. They need to control. They really get a ma major satisfaction out of it. I, I don't understand it at all. I don't get it. But uh, then again, it's not me who's doing it. So there, there is this, I, I would in my humble opinion, I believe that there is a third world war going on. It's a silent war, but it's an, a super 360 degree attack on humanity where they're trying to take over and control all aspects of life. It goes under many different uh, labels. Uh, you got the New World Order agenda. You got Agenda 21, just a different name for the same thing. You got the Fourth Industrial Revolution, just another name for the same thing. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, Agenda 21, the, the main focus there is that they want to control all water, all air, all land, all land, all energy, all information, all media, all military, all police, all properties. I mean, all. And everything. the money. And the money. 
<laughs> and the money, of course. Sorry, I forgot that one. But also all properties, including your children, will be uh, the, which it already is in many aspects, you know, a property of the state. So it's like, if you look at it, absolute horror, horror, horror on steroids. I mean, if this, uh, if they succeed, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I want to be here. But so it's very important for us to to take a stand, look ourselves in the mirror and see, listen, is this okay with me or is it not? If it's not, okay, let's find ways of transcending this madness. And uh, and my way have been to, as much as I can, stand in love, peace, understanding, compassion, but also absolute non, um, well, a bullshit detector uh, on megawatts, just trying to uncover what is actually going on and also you know, transcend it, not fight it, transcend it. It's, uh, you know, violence is their game, control is their game. We have to find a new way, and that is to transcend it through, uh, on a spiritual uh, level, but also by letting go of fear, purifying our minds, and so that we can do this without creating a lot of bad karma. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, especially, I mean, I know people, when, when they hear the word spiritual, I mean, <laughs> we... <laughs> We have a soul. We have, you know, consciousness, uh, and that's that's what we. That's our true power. This is what you know. These psychopaths, so whoever you know is in charge up there, they they don't have that. They they have you know they 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 have a total lack of you know empathy and love and creativity um, and all that. So, Oli, uh, you know, the last time we talked uh, so many years ago, and at, even at that time, I didn't have much clue about Bitcoin, the essence, the properties, the purpose, the es you know, the power, the potential of Bitcoin. So I do want to like go right into the root of, of what I think and many other, you know, Bitcoiners and probably you, you seems you've done a lot of research in the meantime, you know, all those years. So, um, you know, you posted something on, on, I think it was, yeah, LinkedIn, where you say, it sort of it seems uh, there might be you know a uh, strange event or, or war in the background going on in a secret war against uh decentralized bitcoin so is that like the last like fig leaf like is that is that what they what they know they cannot control because it is truly open distributed decentralized immutable permissionless censorship resistant and absolutely scarce and absolutely uncontrollable Once again, a very good question, not uh, easy to answer. I would say uh, Bitcoin has always been a mystery to me because uh, nobody knows or very few people seem to know who is behind it. There's these legends about these people doing this or groups or whatever, but suddenly it was just there. And uh, so th when things like that happen, it's either fantastic or it's a deception, it's an ambush. <laughs> and uh, uh, a digital... One digital global currency has been the wet dream of the New World Order for many, many years. I've known about it since the early 90s that this is what they would like. So when Bitcoin, Bitcoin appeared, I was like, whoa, is this theirs or is it ours? And so decentralization is great, which because that is exactly the opposite of what they the, the dark forces, whatever you want to call them, they want to centralize the power to fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer, and they have done it very successfully in most areas of our lives. But um, when you look at it saying it's decentralized, that's true. And it's also, there's no way they can shut it down. There's no, but that is not true because if you control the structure of the internet, you can also shut that down, meaning that you have to look at, is there actually someone that is in control of the internet? And I, I want to point out, there's one family here that I have been uh, looking very deeply into and that I think most people have not heard of. Do you know, they talk about the deep state. They talk about who is actually behind the scenes, that there are people behind the Rockefellers, behind the Rothschilds, behind that you do not find the real power out in the open. There's a Swedish family called Wallenberg, Wallenberg and uh, this family is just, uh, they, it's been in my, my backyard because I, I was born in Denmark, grew up in Sweden, so I've heard this name forever, but they've got a motto, uh, Essinon Vidiri, meaning 
um, to rule without visibility. And the more I look into these individuals, when I look into their um, parts behind uh, the, both world wars and the Re Russian revolution and decryption and encryption, I mean, and uh, uh, 5G and telecommunications and digital transfer of money and also the whole structure of the internet, they are super crucial in it. They have, they do it through their companies that they have. And through these companies, they have incredible power. They're in the BlackRock Vanguard, uh, these companies, the very um, elusive companies that uh, we don't know who's behind them. I would suggest this family, I would strongly suggest is one major part of this whole thing. They're also, uh, they have a major company called Investor, but they also are uh, behind, they, they control electricity in more than 180 countries. Uh, do you know, so these uh, cold, uh, you know, oh, sorry, we have infrastructure problems with electricity. Suddenly in the middle of the winter when it's super cold, suddenly the electricity goes down in Texas and Sweden and Yugoslavia. And everybody's like, what the hell is going on? We thought it was, uh, you know, but it, and also they're, they're the front line when it comes to developing 5G, which is crucial for their push forward now into smart cities and these things but also other areas of the digital currency. And also what I was not aware of is that um, most, if not all, of the different intelligence agencies around the world, they built their whole surveillance and whatever activity they have on the telecommunication structure, you know, all the, what they do. So they're actually paying these companies for their services, you know, and so... So we are in a level that is just unbelievable. And so I would say when it comes to Bitcoin, yes, decentralized, but it's very centralized if you can control, can control the on or off of the internet. Can, if you can close you it down. For mass it, use only, you mean like for mass, like for scaling up the, the usage. But uh, I mean, if we are honest about it, 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 it isn't, but it, it's still not stoppable because because, you know, I mean, there are people whom I also work with and have had on my on my show, you know, like like Samson or, or Adam Beck, you know, from Blockstream or other people, you know, uh, like uh, Locha Mesh, I think it's called. So they're building, you know, uh, independent, uh, you know, satellite, radio, local mesh network uh, communication. So, yes, it might not be still, you know, you can't scale it up yet, but I think it's in the workings, you know, it's sort of the opposite of what Elon Musk is doing with his Starlink, hmm. but totally like independent, decentralized, distributed, and independent from internet. I tell you, K1, no one is happier than I if, uh, if that is the truth. So I'm super, I'm not an expert in Bitcoin at all, not at all. But I think that since uh, your audience is interested in Bitcoin, I would like to just suggest a few things that I found along uh, the, the recent few years here, because I think that there's something going on here that is very different to the official narrative of many different things because and and these these things these events have also given me uh, the reason to believe more and more in the power of bitcoin because i really think that the new world order is fearing bitcoin big time because uh, the head of the snake has always been the banking system the federal reserve the whole thing and not so much for the money but for the debt that it can create because it's through debt that they can control us so and so that has always been the thing for them to create. And um, so I would like to take you back to June of uh, 2021. Uh, on uh, the, Between the 4th and 6th of June 2021, there was the biggest uh, Bitcoin conference ever in uh, Miami, Florida. It was, uh, there was more than 12,000 attendances. And I mean, there was, it was a massive big success. And it was right after that, that uh, uh, El Salvador went out and said, we're going to make uh, uh, Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador. We're going to be the first nation in the world to do that. And right after them, Paraguay said, this is amazing. We're going to do it as well. So uh, it seems to me like so-called underdeveloped countries Bitcoin is their way out, you know, because they, they have the possibility to get out that way. So um, 
let me see, Guatemala, Paraguay, Panama, El Salvador, and then Ukraine. All of these countries, these four countries were the ones that said, we're going to do it now, right after this conference. So just two days later, I believe it was, uh, El Salvador uh, said, we're going to do it. Panama said as well, we're going to be possibly number two. But what happened just a week or so after, on the 24th of June, 2021, we had this uh, uh, building collapse in Miami, where this uh, apartment building, uh, upscale uh, luxury apartment building, just fell straight down, boom, one part of it just went straight into the ground. And they said, oh my God, how strange is this? Uh, it must be because of the water. It, maybe the cars were too heavy in the parking garage. Absolute BS when you look at it. And I even, I even found footage of controlled demolition from a different angle, where you can see, boom, it's taken down. And you can see the whole... The, the, the level of destruction, how it happened, how fast it happened, it's controlled demolition, 100%. So why would something like that be done? Well, so I go through the victims, I check all of these type of things, or the alleged victims, you also always have to be put a big question mark around these things. Also because they, uh, I have people in Miami who was there helping me to find out about things. And they said right away when this happened, it was closed off like eight blocks around this building. Eight blocks away, people were not allowed to get into this area. This is not a normal behavior for a, a you know, construction fault of a building. Joe Biden came in, you know, all of these, you had uh, all kinds of rescue teams from other countries were coming in and still, they were sort of, the whole behavior was very, very odd. So anyway, so among the victims were the sister-in-law of the president of Paraguay. Her, it was her, uh, Silvia May, Mayra or something like that. I can't remember, Sil, uh, Isabel, Silvia Isabel Mayra or something, I think her name was, her husband and their three children. Okay, so that happened right after Paraguay had said, we're going to go for, so if you look at how mafia, uh, how they normally use, I mean, it's management by fear. So you intimidate, but sometimes if it's a high profile target, you can't hit that one because the blowback can be too, too great. So what you do, you go emotional instead. So you take, uh, you know, you hit somebody's grandmother or their dog or whatever. And possibly in this case, the sister-in-law and her family, boom, were killed in this de controlled demolition. So boom, that went down. And suddenly Paraguay got sec seemed to have gotten second thoughts and started to pull back, which could be a natural reaction. I cannot, I cannot swear that, what, um, that these things are connected. I'm just pointing it out, okay? So also another interesting thing was that John McAfee, uh, the eccentric billionaire from the anti- virus uh, uh, and McAfee uh, company, he was also a big, uh, you know, Bitcoin supporter and also very outspoken in many different areas, which was a problem. He, he also said just before he officially committed suicide that he could bring down the whole U.S. government if he wanted to and that he had uh, uh, enough information to just bring the whole thing down. But that he had backups with so-called dead man scripts. Should he die, that this information would be released. Okay, so right, the building. What kind of information, Oli? Can I interrupt? What, what kind of information do you think? I mean, he had, because I, I remember he he said that. But what could have been I mean, so compromising, or I don't know. I mean, it could be anything from extreme knowledge around the Jeffrey Epstein sexual uh, predator network. I mean, once you open the lid of this hole with horror, horrible, horrible things in it. So if you're on the inside, you know enough. I mean, you, well, anyway, that was his words. He said, this is what I've got. Anyway, so boom, building goes down. Jeffrey Epstein commits suicide in the prison in Spain. He was taken to a prison in Spain. But he, this prison was just outside Barcelona, which is in Catana, Catalonia, which is a special province in Spain. And that is an interesting province because the police there are being trained by Mossad, 
Uh, they go to uh, once every year. They go and they have training camps in Israel. Uh, the the police in Barcelona is called Mossos, not Mossad, but it's very close. They're very tough. They're very brutal, and they practice on a mountain right outside Barcelona, which I think is called Jerusalem, the Jerusalem mountain. So there seem to be strong connections to Israel and indirectly this whole new world order uh, agenda. So anyway, he officially committed suicide there. He suddenly he was uh, uh, shut up, you know, and they said he left this suicide note, but it didn't make any sense whatsoever. He was in fine. He was in high spirits. He just spoke to his wife. His, as far as I know, his wife is still waiting for his body to be, uh, you know, um, delivered. They, so in my world of conspiracies, in my world of understanding or trying to understand these operations, he might very well be alive somewhere, uh, you know, where they do stuff or whatever they use his knowledge or I have no idea. But anyway, so boom, the building went down, suddenly Panama pulled back. But then you had uh, uh, the Ukraine still decided to move forward. So in September of 2021, uh, they... Uh, uh, I think they uh, passed a law saying we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then on a bit later in September uh, of 2021, El Salvador said was the first one to who really to do it. We are now having Bitcoin as legal tender. Boom. That was it. So one, one of the things that I've become famous for, if I must uh, can, can brag a little bit, is to find so-called hidden clues in false flag operations. They, the people that carry out these operations, I'm talking about alleged mass shootings, alleged terror attacks, alleged uh, financial crashes, alleged uh, virus attacks, and so on. In the forensic evidence of these events that when they are made by them, when they're created by them, uh, I was informed in 2014 by an insider that they actually leave clues about upcoming attacks in the forensic evidence. And for me, that sounded really, really weird. But he explained it that the reason they do that is because they are very, very afraid of the law of karma. That if they, but the way they understand it is that if they show us, even in subtle ways, what they're going to do, and we do not react to these clues that they put in front of us, then we indirectly consent to what they're doing, and then the bad karma oh, is on I, our shoulders. I heard you talk about it, Oli. That's that was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, and, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, do you think? Yeah, it would make sense. It would make sense because it is in our, it is in our faces. A lot of things that's going on. Oof. It's so much in our faces, way more than ever before, Oli. This is so mind-boggling for me. You know, it's like people having like a total hypnotic mass transformation psychosis, as Professor Desmet or whoever it's called you know, uh, po postulated. But, but Kaywin, I think it's been in our faces all the time. It's just that now we're starting to see it because when you look at old stories, you know, it seems and old uh, legends and old whatever it is, it seems to me like the, the setup in this matrix or whatever we are living in, uh, it seems like evil has to present itself. It has to say, this is what I'm going to do. And then it's up to us. Are we going to open the door or not? They knock on the door. They cannot just do it. We have to open the door and welcome it in. So this is super in important, I find, because if that is true, which I have found that it is, that gives us the opportunity to find these clues and possibly stop them uh, from doing these attacks. And up to date, uh, I have... Um, exposed or connected 64 of these events up to two months before they happen on international radio, pointing them out. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going And in November, I found clues for the first time ever in some attacks in Norway, which is a NATO country, pointing to Kazakhstan. I was like, what? So in my newsletter in November, I'm, I'm saying, I, I don't understand. I have no idea why, but they're pointing, saying we're going to hit Kazakhstan. And then in the December one, I found Ukraine, the Ukraine. They were pointing to the Ukraine. I said, I do not understand why, if I'm correct, they're pointing towards the Ukraine. So this is interesting in my world, because then that means that it's not something that naturally happens in these countries. It is these forces that have carried out these false flags in Norway and in other countries as well, that are going to do it. They're pointing. We are going to do this. And then it's up to us to find it. So 
Anyway, so in uh, on the 6th of January, 5th and 6th of January, this whole thing in Kazakhstan started. And I have pointed out Boreli, uh, the city of Boreli in northwest of uh, of uh, Kazakhstan, because that was where the clue was, that is a part of a gas uh, area. And that was, they say that this uprising was because of, of uh, uh, that the, the prices of gas went skyrocketed. So that was the reason that this whole uh, uprising was going. I would say absolutely, I doubt it, 100%. Because then we're looking at something is a rainy, it's very easy to get people pissed off, you know. You turn off the heat, you turn off the gas, you you say, no, sorry, we're going to charge you $500 per gallon of, of petrol. People are going to be pissed off. Super easy to get things going if that is what you're trying to accomplish. And then you look at countries like Kazakhstan and the Ukraine. And once again, that Swedish family had been there for years, manipulating them, sucking out everything they can and really torturing these countries. So why... Kazakhstan and the Ukraine, I did not understand. But then one of the first things that happened in the Ukraine when this whole thing escalated was that they shut down the internet. And when they shut down the internet, uh, because the thing is that I, what I found out is that the, the Kazakhstan, if what I've been told is correct, was the world's seventh strongest Bitcoin mining nation. So when they shut down the internet, the Bitcoin mining went down, whoop, and the prices of Bitcoin started dropping really drastically. The Ukraine is another of the, the top 10 of Bitcoin mining uh, uh, nations, but, but uh, the Ukraine was just about to step the game up massively because what they've done is they've taken this former nuclear power station, they've emptied it, and they were, t they were turning it into a Bitcoin mining center that were going to be open up in the summer of 2022, meaning that would be a powerful, powerful uh, thing in the Bitcoin community that would really sort of make a massive difference. So, okay, so these things were happening. And then... Uh, on the 15th of January, these things are happening, bam, 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 like this, Kazakhstan, this, the Ukraine is suddenly starting to be, uh, you know, stirred up. And then Tonga, on the 15th of January, goes out, this tiny little, um, this tiny little uh, nation, because it seems like it's these underdeveloped nations that have the biggest benefit of Bitcoin, because suddenly they can get out of the grip of the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, these type of gangsters, and, and free themselves. So Tonga, this tiny little nation, went out on the 15th of, of uh, January proclaiming, we are going to be nation number two in the world with Bitcoin as legal tender. It took only a few hours and suddenly this island was hit by a volcanic eruption. Absolutely not true. The, the eruption was 500 times stronger than the bomb over Nagasaki, 500 times. I mean, we can't even imagine the power of that. And there are satellite images, if we can trust them, that seems to show a missile with some yep. kind of warhead yeah. that just goes down and you have, when you look at the imagery, it's not an er eruption. It is an explosion of... Do a you think it was a conventional like, like nuclear or EMP? Or, I mean, I don't know. You know, it, could it be like a advanced technology? I, like, uh, uh, you know, I can, only, I can only guess, but I mean, 500 times the bomb over Nagasaki, yeah. that is some powerful thing. But normally they, they use multiple different weaponry in, at the same time. So while this eruption was going on, there was uh, more than 80,000 lightning strikes uh, on the side of the volcano. 80,000, that's 167 per minute, these lightning strikes to a volcano. Does that sound natural to you? Not at all. What we're talking about is HARP technology, H-A-A-R-P technology, directed energy weapons, these type of things, where they've been bragging about for many, many years. You can go into Lockheed Martin's Yeah, website, they can create many other... huge collateral damages locally. I don't oh. think they can do it like globally. I don't think that it's that, that, that far advanced, but I think like locally, like whether it be weather, storms, hurricanes, whatever that is, or, or you know, earthquakes. No, 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 K-1, this is globally because these power stations, oh, I know it. Okay. They have all of these uh, centers uh, spread all over the world. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. yeah, there's I don't know how many there are, but there are many, many, many of them. 
It started in the 1990s, as far as I know, in the Alaska and the U.S., and then they started spreading them out also close to their military bases and so on. So they have this grid, so they can hit in different areas. Anyway, so, so here we have another nation that stands up and say, we're going to fight, we're going to be the ones for Bitcoin, and boom, they're hit just as even more drastically. I mean, once again, management by fear. Yeah. Somebody is telling some the rest of us saying anyone that stands up against us, we're going to smash you to the smithereens, you know. So Tonga happened. And then uh, then you, the Ukraine started the, the invasion. They started uh, um, in, in Washington. They went out and said uh, there was this press conference saying we found out that Russia is planning a false flag attack on the Ukraine. That's the first time ever that I know of that the word false flag has ever been used publicly. But a false flag is a, a, psych, it's a psychological operation where the attacked one is actually the attacker, where the attacked one is actually the attacker. It's the exact opposite. So if, if what he said was true, then Russia would pretend to have been attacked by the Ukraine and then uh, attack the Ukraine or invade it for self-defense. That is not what we see here at all. So that press conference, absolute bullshit. Once again, somebody is playing with our minds saying, actually, this is us behind it. And I also think that, you know, there are all of these uh, color um, color codes for for different operations they have in, in uh, many, if not all of the mass shootings and uh, alleged terror attacks in Europe and in the US. They've had a very strong color code and the colors that are being used in the U.S. is um, is deep purple, and the color that has been used in Europe is magenta. It can be anything in, in the the clothes, the ties, the thing. It is a secret uh, lang communication language to the people in the know, saying this is our operation, this is our. And then Boris Johnson, who is very much part of these whole thing, his dad was an MI6 agent as well, and uh, he went to the Ukraine. And when all of this was in the middle of it, he stepped forward on a press conference with a green tie, which a green tie he has never, I can almost swear, has never, ever worn a green tie ever. This is not a, you don't see green ties at all, but that signal, a green light for the operation, we're going to do it now. That is, in my interpretation, we're going to hit the Ukraine now, or we are going to, and now comes the next chapter of, of this whole thing if it's okay with you if I go into what I believe is going on at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I, I also want you, want you a little bit your thoughts on, you know, the, the real power structures like, you know, City of London, <laughs> the real monetary financial, you know, complex, um, if you have like any thoughts on that. It's, it, as far as I understand it, after all of these years, you up until now, you had the world divided into three power centers. You had the a spiritual center in so-called spiritual, the religious center in the Vatican. I mean, whatever that means. Uh, you have the financial center in the old city of London, and you got the war center in Washington, D.C. And in between these three power uh, hubs, uh, you have had extensive trafficking of all kinds, everything from pedophile trafficking to oil to guns to uh, gold to organs. I mean, you name it in this whole thing. It's a very, very criminal triangular uh, system that has just been like this. Now these are being exposed big time. So there's a whole disruption going on in that whole area. But I tell you, there is now when this whole Ukraine thing happened, I had just, with my background, I had just red alert lights all over the place. Like burp, burp, burp. Wait a second, wait a second. Something is totally wrong here. Be and I, I want to, if anyone has seen, there's, a, there's an incredible movie called Wag the Dog with Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. It was released in 1998. Yeah, and in that movie, they show you how they're doing it. They show you exactly. I'm just going to go through the synops synopsis, just a quick one, because it's a super interesting and very important movie to watch. What they do is that um, there was this crisis in the White House, the the president who looks a lot like Clinton, who was president at that time, had done something sexually to an, an um, 
a young woman who, who was working as a volunteer in the White House. So massive scandal. It was just before the election in, in the movie. So there was this an enormous scandal just at the horizon. So what to do? The president was in China, so they call in this so-called fixer. That's Robert De Niro, a very discreet individual who comes in and starts taking over. Okay, we need to, to control the damages here and see if we can sort this situation out. So what they do is he says, keep the president in China, keep him quiet, say he's sick, whatever. And in the meantime, we need to divert the attention away from what is actually going on. So what, what he starts doing is to make a massive diversion by going to war with Albania, a war that does not exist anything else than in media. And so the way he does it is that he calls together this press conference he, uh, in Washington, you know, all the international media, and they say, okay, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, uh, the reason we call you together urgently here is just to say there's absolutely no truth about any type of a conflict with Albania. The U.S. is not, we guarantee, is not preparing for war. So we just want to make sure that there's, you know, so you know they are not true. So the media is like, what? Is there a conflict with Albania? What is that? And also they called to a new press conference and said, and this has nothing to do with a new B-3 bomber. And, and people are like, what B-3 bomber? And, and, he, and the guy he gets um, the press conference, they, they, he said, okay, no, the B-3 bomber doesn't even exist. We just may want to make that clear to you. It does not exist. And it does not. It, there is no B-3 bomber. There is no conflict with Albania. There's no. Anyway, so the media just goes wild, like, my God, we, are we? <clears throat> and also through the president, he activates different military, um, you know, like uh, fortress, uh, forts where the military psyops and these are activated and put on red alert for no reason, but they are activated. So the, so the journalist like, oh my God, the, the army is there, the navy is that, the air force is activated. So there must be some truth, zero truth to the whole thing. So it just goes on and on and on. And then uh, Robert De Niro then contacts uh, Dustin Hoffman, who's a Hollywood producer, and gets him in to make it like a movie to get the whole thing going. So they start with green screen stuff and they get Willie Nelson in to make a song, you know, the home returning hero. They get Woody Harrelson, who's a messed up war veteran. He becomes the hero. And then they make this whole big psychological operation, but it's only in media. It's not real. So I'll tell you one thing, Kaywin, that is super interesting is <laughs> Funny. Look, it's getting so absurd. Only I mean, just look at the president of Ukraine. The guy is a, like a, a winning. What do you call it? A, like a super, like a star dancer and an actor. And then you have uh, Steven Seagal, like in some on, on the other front, right? With the, does he have like the Russian citizenship? And then you have Sean Penn, you know, r you know, live, you know, at at the place in Ukraine, like making a documentary in the back. Well, what is this about? I mean, this is like a you know, it's it's getting absurd. It is super absurd, super. But here is an incredible thing, because what this movie is describing, do you remember the Monica Lewinsky thing uh, mm -hmm. with Bill Clinton, course, yeah. uh -huh. where there was a massive scandal in media for months about, did he give him a blowjob or did she right. not? That was the whole thing. Exactly. And Clinton said, there's absolutely no truth to whatever, you know, okay. But the movie Wag the Dog was released one month before the Monica Lewinsky happened. Okay. And the, the images of uh, the intern in the movie, it's almost identical to when Clinton then hugs Monica Lewinsky. And so I tell you, the Monica Lewinsky thing is an operation on its own. That did not happen. That scandal did not happen because what they, what they did when the whole Monica Lewinsky scandal erupted, the whole media was looking to the left and they, the U.S. then sent in 79 different missiles in to many different countries, Sudan, one of them, totally innocent country, and bombed the shit out of these countries while the media was looking that way. Then through, when, when uh, the, the trial and the whole thing went to trial with Monica Lewinsky, they did it again. But this went in Iraq. Then they hit all the different, when the media was looking the other way. And then they did it a third time when uh, the whole, during the Kosovo war, 
the whole world looking that way, and they did it again. So I tell you, that movie, that movie, because in the movie, it's a matter of diverting the attention away from a political scandal inside, a sex scandal inside the White House, but it can also be used the other way around, that you create a scandal for people to look at the scandal to not see what is actually going on. So here we have, so please keep that in mind. Deception, deception, deception. It did not even happen. It did not even happen. But they still have to tell us, you know, they still have to show us because of the law of karma. So, okay, so here we have, first of all, we have the whole corona pandemic, which is a massive operation, has nothing to do with health whatsoever. It's the new world order overtake. That is what it is. The Agenda 21, the fourth industrial revolution. That's the name of the game. Control all aspects of your life. Your freedom's out the window. Depopulation, the whole, I mean, it's as dark as it can get. So that is where millions and millions of people are now becoming more and more aware, saying, my God, how many boosters do I need? I mean, Omnicron, Sumpicon, Bropicon, suddenly will be Popcorn Cron. Do you know, like how many this, it doesn't make any type of sense at all. It's not protecting. So people are becoming aware. They needed a d diversion. It's like watching a magician on stage. You know, look over here, look over here. Diversion, diversion is the name of the game. So here we have this whole uh, Agenda 21 and the New World Order. What they're trying to do is destroy everything. And out of the ruins they will build the new world order. That is chaos, an uh, order out of chaos, you know, create chaos and out of, out of this chaos, their order, a one world order. I mean, a total super fascist, I don't even know what to call it, dictatorship, bad news, bad news, bad news. So they destroy everything. They spend months destroying or years here using the corona to destroy food, uh, delivery, uh, transport links, uh, the freight trains, uh, ships, anything to destroy the whole, also shut down small businesses, shut and down And consolidation tourists. of power, right? I mean, at the, at the same time, I mean, you know, destruction and, and chaos, but at, at the, at the, on the other hand, like consolidating, con concentrating, you know, buying up for pennies, like all the, you know, small and mid whatever, you know. This, uh, this is, yeah, that's the name of the game. They do it over and over again. So they destroy society. And then, so part of their... Uh, agenda is to destroy society, destroy whatever it is. So here we are just uh, not long ago, then suddenly somebody said, my God, let's bring thousands of trucks into the capital cities of the world and block the streets and block this, this and block that. What are we doing? We're doing exactly what they want to, because we're destroying it for ourselves. We are blocking it ourselves. Oh, so that's if you see, oh, that's very important. How, I mean, how differentiated do you do you see? Because there was this instance, you know, where this truck was, was loaded with guns. Do you think? I mean, there was like really authentic, genuine, like you know, efforts to, you know, to 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 raise awareness, to to protest, to you know, to to make you know these these psychopaths you know reverse their actions or whatever. And then on the other hand, you might have you know infiltrated. But do you see that a little bit differentiated, or or do you think everything was like a Totally, because the thing is, the only thing you need to do, because people are good people, you know, normal people are, have a good heart, they're compassionate, they're, they love freedom, they love all of these things. The only thing you need to do is someone to start, you know, the piper, and you follow. So the only thing, come up with the idea, go with the first trucks, and then people will, will follow you in the thousands, and then you... If you control media, you start pumping it out. Alternative media, pump it out and make it a whole hero journey. Yay, yay, now we're going to do... No, actually, you're playing their game. You're destroying it for yourself. It was like right when this happened, I said, why don't you go to the harbors? Just bypass all of these lockdown orders when harbors are locked down and the ships are lying in the hundreds queuing with loads of stuff to, to unload. Go there, break the rules, come in with the ships, unload to the trucks and deliver. That would help people, not the other way around. And then when you look at, for instance, uh, the whole Canada setup, Toronto, if you look at the logo for Toronto, it's 666. If you look for the logo of the truck, the whole international truck thing, it's 666. And then you have the leaders of the 
the the whole that they're the the heroes and people are standing up and being arrested are they really and then you know and then in the end the leaders had to go because they were threatened with a hundred thousand dollars or whatever in fines so s- suddenly the leaders are gone normal people are standing there what's going on here and while this whole thing had happened police have secretly started uh, getting to people's homes you know people that have donated money into these things are being harassed you know by people in uniform i don't want to say police people in uniform that are coming so you sort of you you get the whole network to expose itself and then you chop from the bottom mm. but you were the one to control the whole thing so i think it's also there's a there's a very interesting card game called the illuminati card game yeah. that was uh, pr- printed in 1995 the last edition in 1995 it has predicted so many of these yeah, things yeah i saw you it's posted un- that it was fascinating un- i showed it to my, to my girlfriend she was like wow <laughs> and in in this were also this this trucker card mm-hmm. this trucker yeah. card is one of these cards. that's that's crazy but then um you also have The Simpsons, which is a yeah. very, very interesting thing. You have, you know, I have a friend who was, uh, he was stuck in, in China for eight years in the mid 80s, no, late 80s and beginning of the 90s. And while he was there, he was a businessman, but he had, uh, they had uh, confiscated his passport, so he couldn't leave. But he was mingling, he was mingling with a lot of international businessmen and stuff. And one of the things he did to get contacts and so on was to go to the gym at one of these big high-end Sheraton hotels or whatever. And he, he had no idea about these things that I'm looking into, but he, he mentioned it one day that when they were working out, when the Simpsons went, came on, everybody stopped training and everybody went to see the simpsons and these were like ceo of nestle and these type of uh, companies and he was like this is ridiculous i mean this is just a cartoon or is it because if you look at the simpsons very often you got like a whole episode that is about one thing and then in the middle there's one thing that doesn't really match in it's sort of like it's but ha 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 that was funny or is it a secret communication system where they are talking directly to the people in the know saying, this is what we're going to do. This is where you should put your stocks and actions and whatever in that direction. Now we're going to do this. Now we're going to do that. And in the Simpsons here, just before this happened or a while ago, there were a truck uh, convoy in Canada going towards the capital where the president who has exactly the same hair as Trudeau was cl- climbing out the window down the building that looks exactly like the building in Toronto, escaping. So what is going on, Kevin? I would say, this is and uh, oh, oh God. yeah, so deception, deception, deception. And now we have in the Ukraine, so officially there's a war going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is interesting. Uh, hang on, holding a nickel. They should be there. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I just had two two no, seconds. It's okay. it's all right. yeah. But uh, let me let me before we forget. Um, Ole, you you mentioned you know the hash rate, Bitcoin mining. So remember when when China sort of made mining Bitcoin mining like prohibited and sorry. and then kicked everybody. But the hash rate like recovered pretty sorry, fast. Just, you know? Okay, sorry, I just yeah, got go interrupted yeah, no in the studio. So I'm back. Sorry about that. Please tell me again. Yeah, I remember you talked about like the hash rate of Bitcoin mining, you know, and and but you do remember when China, uh, you know, kicked out the Bitcoin miners or made it illegal, prohibited everything. But then, you know, the hash rate recovered like as, almost seamlessly, you know, I mean, everything, all the hash rate went to it, it dropped like 50, 60, whatever percent the hash rate in, in China. But then, you know, they found other avenues, exits to United States or other countries. So it's getting more, which is really good. You know, it's really be- that's the beauty of Bitcoin. It's getting more and more distributed and decentralized. And I think it's just a matter of time, you know, to build up this critical mass. We don't need like, you know, half of the po- Earth's population. All we need is like three, four, five, let's say maximum, I don't know, six, seven percent of the population or each country. And, you know, you mentioned all these smaller countries, South American countries, developing countries who are now, you know, waking up and there are more and more people, more nation states, more, you know, people like uh, Bukela from El Salvador making legal tender. So don't, do you think we are sort of on a, on a precipice on the uh, on one hand on the verge of a third world war, but on the other hand, they're panicking so much, whoever they are, that, 
it's it's somehow I don't know maybe it's it's forming its own structure and order for you know for humanity. Um, is that something I mean you can relate to? Totally, and uh, it's it's on different levels. You know, you got on the street level, you got on an international national level, but also on a spiritual level. It's on all of these levels at the same time. So it's a matter of from from what angle because we need to look at all of them at the same time because all of it is happening at the same time so it's like i think i thought that in 2019 we had them we i saw the the dark empire that had been in power for so many years was falling apart absolute dis, you know there was no way they could hold and suddenly they pulled the last final card which was the whole corona operation so that took us into a whole new ball game like whoa because they are in after they unleashed that one they have been using every single aspect of the artillery i think in all of the different areas so what we are up against is the maximum power of their deception, of their manipulation, of their intimidation, of their weaponry, of whatever directed energy weapons, they're using the whole shebang. That is, these are signs of somebody desperate, I would say. Because also when you think of it, I mean, I don't envy these individuals. They have been living in luxury and uh, being treating us like absolute, uh, well, in a horrible way for hundreds of years. And so many of these horrible things that are happening in the world are done by a handful. This is the thing. They're so people in general, beautiful individuals. And then you've got some absolute super psychos, assholes that have messed it up. So these individuals that have so much on their conscious, they are freaking out, I think. And that also steps up the game because then you have desperation. And also when you think of it, I mean, I stand for nonviolence, but there's a lot of other people that would like a lynching party instead. So I can understand that they're freaking out and that they're trying everything they have to, to win this game. But it's when you look at how few they are and how many we are, that is where AI is needed. And, and it's AI and with the 5G, 6G, 7G technology that gives fast enough bandwidth to make all of these things work together. Without the technology, they cannot control us. So it's a, it's a matter, it's like a, uh, like a drag race about who's going to come first. Are, are they going to be able to activate this technology before it's too late for them? Or are we going to stand up in time and say, listen, this is not on, we're not accepting this. So it's a, it's a battle between good and evil, dark and light. And, but I'm super optimistic, I tell you. It ain't over till it's over. And the thing is, if they were so powerful as they say they are, why, why would they fear someone like me the way they do or many other true speakers? I mean, I'm being hit so brutally. I'm being shot down right, left and center. They, even, even Patreon shut us down here now because of... Uh, one of the interviews with Rainer Fulmish on my website, not on Patreon, on my website, they say, do you know, on, you're muted, by the way. Ben. So it's, it's unbelievable that these are good signs, I would say, because that is, these are signs of desperation. So, but if I, if I may, I would like to come back to this whole thing in the Ukraine, because uh, um, a, a while ago, I did. Uh, I had uh, like one police officer in the U.S., one in England, one in Sweden, and and in all of these uh, media outlets, there's so much violence. When you look, you open the newspapers, just like violence and beheadings and rapes and stuff like. Then you look out the window; it's pretty calm. Do you know like what? It doesn't really match up. So we did an experiment. We took one day, one day, and in these three different countries, we just took an ordinary newspaper and said, okay, now let's check out every single case of violence in this newspaper and go on location and find out did it actually happen. I tell you about 90% of these things were not real. And one of them were a stabbing, a very brutal stabbing in a small little town of Sweden. And so the, my friend went there. He he asked. This was uh, uh, you know big in in Swedish media and the news and so on because 
This was this immigrant who has stabbed this woman. Awful, awful. If it had happened, awful. Anyway, so he went there to this small little town and he started asking people this thing that, are you sure it happened? Yes, they said. So how do you know? Were you there? No, but I read the newspapers. Okay, or I saw it on the news. So you didn't actually see anything. Nope, but I know it's true because I saw it in the media. Okay, so he went to the hospitals. There were no reports, you know, of, of injuries or anything like that. He went to the police. Office. There are no reports of violent incidents or anything, meaning this is absolutely just not true. We're back to this war of deception. And so there's another really, really important thing to understand, and that is... Uh, the World Economic Forum in Davos. I'm sure you've had a lot about that on your show. But they did something in the early 90s where they started what was called the Young, young Global Leaders, which was they handpicked, they recruited individuals uh, for future operations. And these are like, it's just like a Bilderberg uh, yeah. group, but yeah. of youngsters. The former chancellor so of Austria, where I am, you know, he's now somewhere in Silicon Valley working for Peter Thiel now. But that's former chancellor, Sebastian Kurz. He is also a young global leaders program. Yeah. Yeah. And in this, you have like um, Macron from France, you got the Belgian. Uh, crew uh, from Belgium, the prime minister there, you have the Finnish prime minister, you got Mola Salin from Sweden, who was almost the Swedish prime minister, and who was part of covering up a mass murder of 1000 people on board MS Estonia that was blown up, has been uh, covering this up for many years, used to cover it up and shut it down. Uh, you got uh, Mark Zuckerberg, from, you got the, uh, the founder of Avas, you got the founder of Wikipedia, you got the founder of uh, Google. I mean, Google. And one of the co-founders of Google's, his wife is the founder of a company called uh, 23andMe, which is a DNA gathering uh, operation where they say, oh, you want to find out the, where you come from? We can help you. Then you start looking into that. No, you're not. You're gathering the DNA. That's what you're doing, which is also one of the reasons for all of these PCR swab tests and stuff down the throat. That's DNA up your nose, that DARPA gel up and destroying your, your pineal gland. Horror, horror, horror. Avoid these type of things. So all of these uh, individuals, but you also got like... Um, uh, Richard Branson from Virgin Islands. You got Bono. You got um, uh, you got Angela Merkel. You got uh, Bill Gates, and you got Putin. Putin as well. And and yeah, I also to saw distance himself. I think I think he tried to do something. I mean, he was there, course. but I'm not sure whether he was part of the young global. But, but anyway, I, I'm not sure about Putin. This guy, you know, he's such a. I, I I think he's playing like the most authentic role in this whole thing. What do you think about Putin, by the way? I and have no idea. I I I saw this interview with a, a former uh, MI6 agent. Yeah who he described when he was uh, being trained in the UK many years ago, one of the other agents was Putin. He said, I got really confused when, when he suddenly appeared in Russia. Do, do you see, so what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Is it sort of in the Cold War, when you look at who was Gorbachev, who was this, who was that, who, who started the, the Russian revolution? It was started by Swedish bankers. Once again, the Wallenberg family, the Ashberg family, the Palmer family, the, later the Swedish prime minister that was officially gone down, his family was part of founding the Communist Party in, in India, the Communist Party in Russia. Also, I mean, when you look into these families, they're not that many, but it's it's like mind blowing where they involved. And then you say, oh, but Lenin came and he was standing for, no, Lenin was just financed by these of dudes. Of course, yeah. Then and you the, have the whole First World War, Second World yeah. War. And, so, and the fifth pillar is Wall Street, who's also co financed. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, the usual suspects over and over and over and over again. And so this brings us back to the Ukraine, where I just saw like five minutes ago, there was this uh, uh, member of, of parliament in, in the Ukraine, a, a woman who was being interviewed. And she said, yes, we're standing up. We're fighting for Russia. We're fighting for the new world order. She says the new world <laughs> order. It's like, OK, so so what what is going on here? What is going on here? Because if Putin is one of theirs, 
and and the Ukraine president is a pat, uh, what do you call it, uh, one of their uh -huh. people, which very often is the case, who's act, also an actor that comes in very handy. <clears throat> And then you control the telecom system through the Wallenberg family, the electric system there also. You can shut down the internet on and off the way you want it. I tell you, you can manipulate the outlet of the information in a massive way. Meaning also that the people in the Ukraine will think, what the hell, we're at war. Or are you? Or are you? Because I'm, I'm going to meet some people here from who have just escaped from Ukraine in a few days. And I'm really going to, I really want to hear, did you see anything or did you just see it in media? Because there's uh, like CCTV cameras in, in right. Kiev. Right, exactly. You, you check these ones out. Nothing. And you, I mean, zero. you watch it. Yeah. There's zero there and they're bombing there. Or are they? They're, they're like images of uh, some of the bombings is from Palestine. Some, some of the images we've been shown is from a computer game. Yeah. They have these jet fighter, the phantom jet pilot. They love these stories to spice the whole thing up. It's in Wag the Dog as well. They have the yeah. hero story there. They have, but also they need to show us that they're, that they're doing it. So I have found photos, I can send them to you afterwards, where people are running around, CNN are doing this whole thing about, oh, they're, they're fighting like that. Look at the weapons. They're made of wood. They're made, that's, cut out of yeah, a plank. <laughs> so it's like, and then you got this photo model, this top model from the Ukraine who's standing, I'm going to fight Putin like that. She right. stands with an airsoft rifle and she's a promoter of airsoft rifle. I don't think the Russian army will really be scared off with some air gun or uh, airsoft pl pl pellets, you know. And also, please explain to me what logic in Putin invading the Ukraine it's like there's absolutely zero logic in the whole thing. But if someone is trying to take over the Ukraine for the Bitcoin mining of one of the reasons to control that, mm -hmm. that would suddenly make sense exactly. to give, give them an excuse to go in there and control this area. So I would very much like to see that area where this nuclear form of nuclear power station, where they were they were dead in the process of turning it into a Bitcoin mining center. Is that in I don't know where that is, but I have the name of the place, so I'm going to check it out and then see where is the so-called war going on. I would not be surprised if it is right there, you know, around that area where they go when will military get the normal people out of the way and take over the, the operation so okay I, yeah i must say at this point i i think that what is very important is that we don't just react so many times we just go into reaction oh my god that's horrible without looking into it so i would say when these things happen take a step back back you know go for a walk breathe hug a cat you know hug a cup whatever works for you and then come back and look at it again and then ask yourself who benefits from me believing this whole thing because there's a whole massive operation when it comes to what's actually going on here a psychological operation that is playing ping pong with your mind you know the shocking thing is i mean there's so many you know super intelligent people even within the especially within the bitcoin community but they have somehow Lo loads of them many uh, there's but you know on the other hand there's a bunch of them that that totally see through everything you know they they question everything they know what's going on but then there are some a lot of people who buying into this narrative you know all this you know if you're against if, you, if you're not pro you know ukraine you're anti whatever it's 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 crazy so um and then you know i mean is there is there any investigative journalist that's que you know questioning anything about or, or or at least you know showing like the the other side or the what do you call there's supposed to be a transcript of of putin like you know laying it out like what are the you know that he's trying to to avoid civilian casualties um i mean how much how much is it coming through how much how much transparency is there is there is there questioning at all by any journalist this is this is really uh very weird what's going on so it is and and i don't know anyone else who's saying the things that that i am you know so i'm, I'm the first one to point these things out that i know of, but hopefully there are more i don't i don't know but so, but that doesn't mean it's like Gandhi said. Even if you're in a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. So whoever, 
sees it if it is deception. But I really truly believe that we are in a massive game of, of deception. But the, the world of the CIA is smoke and mirrors, you know, like inside, mm -hmm. like one of these with mirrors everywhere. And then you put in smoke that even the people in these operations don't know it themselves. They don't know the bigger picture, but it is coming to a point. Yeah. It's, it's just coming to a point where it's becoming very, they can't hide it anymore. It's like, uh, you know, it's like when you're in the forest and the, the, it's all misty and so on, uh, at dawn, then the sun comes through and the sun starts heating it up and the mist starts lifting. And suddenly you start seeing, Oh my God, I can see clearly now, you know, you can see what's actually going on around you. And I think this is the process we are going through. But I, I also want to point out another thing that I think is going on, because it seems to me like humanity is going through like a filtration, almost like a, like a, we're being separated into two, two different ways of seeing reality. And it's, uh, if we call 3D reality, the reality where we used to be, the, where many still are, where, which is a reality where you trust the media, you trust the police, you trust the politicians, there's no corruption, there's no one, why would ever anyone ever lie to you? You know, if I just walk across the street when it's a green light and not a red light, everything is okay. I pay my taxes and I shut up and I smile and everything is great. 3D reality where media is controlling you. Now, the, the controllers, the ones that are controlling 3D reality, is in what I call 4D reality, which is, it looks the same, but it's the frequency is higher. It's just like on a radio receiver when you're you're listening. You it's the same radio receiver, but you have on one frequency you can listen to classical music like 3D reality, and then if you raise the frequency, whoop, suddenly you hit like maybe heavy rock and roll. Same radio receiver, but it's a different reality coming out of it. So 3D reality is listening to classical music. You come up to a higher frequency of of awareness or whatever you want to call it. Many times it's because we've done a lot of self work with ourselves or, or we've gone through traumatic events or whatever it is that have taken us on a, almost like a, on a hero's journey that where we decided to meet these challenges. And then we come to the next level. And in 4D reality, it is a very difficult uh, reality for many of us to come to because in 4D reality, it looks the same, but it's actually upside down. It's inverted meaning that suddenly we start seeing, oh my God, do you know, like the, these uh, child protective services, they're actually kidnapping children and, and the police is actually hurting us and the hospital is actually killing us. And the, do you know, all of these was absolutely the exact opposite. And this is what evil has done through all ages is trying to um, invert reality. And so in, in 4D reality, where many of us are, I think the people who are listening to this show as well, most of us are, that is a very, many people go through, you know, anger, despair, frustration, uh, you know, all kinds of emotional things. Also, because when you start, when you're in 4D reality and you are in that awareness, you, and you try to communicate with people in 3D reality, there's no way. They, it's like, like you're saying, Listen to the music, it's heavy rock and roll. They are saying, no, it's classical music. Both are right, but it's just separated. And, and now it's like almost the mask and the vaccines are dividing us into these two groups. And there's another um, symbolic, symbolic image I would like to share. Like there was this guru guy many years ago. He said, by the year 2020, 2012, the world would be like in two groups. Like one group will be like on a train station, I would say 3D reality. The other would be on board a train, 4D reality. By the year 2012, the train will start moving out. People can still get off and on or whatever they want to do, but it's still there's a chance. By the year 2015, the train has started getting momentum and it's harder and harder for you to communicate. You can shout and stuff and you can still hear each other. By the year 2020, the distance is so far that the only way that, uh, because in 4D reality, there's no way that you can go back into 3D reality. You, you cannot unsee what you have seen. You cannot un understand what you have understood. So 
the only way, and I call it the popcorn effect, like three, in 3D reality, there are some individuals that have just like a very hard shell and no, 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 no. But then when they finally look, it like, boom, their mind just explodes and they understand it so fast. And it seems like that popcorn effect, it's almost, it can pop you into 4D reality. Yeah, very... that's what I see too. That's, that's, that's amazing what you're saying, actually, because I was just uh, recently talking to my girlfriend about this, you know, that the, the, the speed is so uh, exponential now, you know, in, in uh, everything is developing, evolving so fast and, and yeah. with it be awakened. But then, you know, you have these people still, you know, with their, with the, with their head in the sand. So, uh, but there is, you know, exponential, uh, you know, awakening uh, taking place. Uh, so, Ole, um, before we wrap up, I want to ask you, like, what, what do you see on the horizon? I mean, what's your thoughts on, on free private cities, citadels, like, you know, uh, local economies, like sort of, a, uh, I want to like talk about the solution, the effects, the, you know, uh, what are we striving for? You know, not only, I mean, you know, I know you're a truth seeker and, and uh, you know, investigative journalist and everything, but uh, let's say rooted let's say, you know, rooted in Bitcoin, if, if we if we do have you know, more and more, you know, people, more and more countries, nation states adopting Bitcoin, and I think it's taking place, what, what do you see on the horizon? What, what is the, like the, you know, the optimistic real, uh, reality that, that you see? I'm not a financial guy at all. I'm actually not interested in money. Uh, and so on. So I'm the wrong person to ask from a financial point of view. But I am a free, yeah. I am a, sorry? But I mean structurally, like like you know, real like, yeah. like breaking free from these centralized structures. Yeah, what I see is uh, that uh, just like in a schoolyard or whatever it is, if you got bullies there, or if you're up against the mafia, or if you're up against the uh, corrupt government, so what they do is they use the exact same methods, and all of them are based on one single thing, and that is fear. They need you scared. When you're scared, they can control you. When you're not scared, they have a major problem. Because if they say, if you don't do that, then, and you say, then what? And you're not afraid. If you don't do, I'm going to, and you say, well, do it. If you, I'm going to kill you. Well, do it. I mean, if you're at a point, the more you can let go of fear, the more you can let go of the attachment to things, the more you can let go of attachment to your own body, uh, even. And because this is on a spiritual war level, the more you can free yourself, free your mind, then the freer you can be and the better decisions you can make for yourself and your loved ones. So I think to free yourself of fear instead of focusing on all the dif different details and get totally lost, the more you can stay out of fear the more then you can handle the situations better. Inform yourself at the same time. Take it in those two steps where you can, you don't need to know at all. People think, oh, I have to be buried in, in the computer this uh, 24 hours a day. Absolutely not. As soon as you see, oh my God, somebody's trying to, to totally manipulate me. That's all you need to know. It's like if you're in a relationship with a very manipulating partner, once you see, oh my God, they're trying to control me through manipulation, you know the name of the game. And especially if you know the name of the game is inversion. They tell you it's white, you see it's black. They tell you it's good, you see it's actually bad. So this is interesting because also everything they try to ban is good. And everything they try to promote nowadays is often really bad for you. So the only thing you need to do is turn it upside down. Okay, thank you. Child protective services, I'm not giving my child there, that's for sure. You know, Mr. Police Officer, you used to be somebody I can trust. Uh, right now, I am totally avoiding you. You know, just see it for what it is. And then the, the beauty with fear is also that it's only in your mind. It is not real. It's only in your mind and it's always connected to the future, to something that has not yet happened. So when you think of it, it's actually only speculation. And most of us are letting that, these speculations control our lives. It's an absolute waste, absolute waste of life. So what to do? Free your mind, free your mind, purify your mind, breathe, come down back into the body. Don't freak out. When, when somebody says, boom, then take a step back before you just obey and do whatever they say to you and just say, wait a second, before I get scared, I am just going to take a little walk. You know, 
I'm going to listen to some music I'm going to do. I'm going to calm myself down. And then I'm going to come back and say, what did you say? And then ask yourself, who benefits from me believing whatever it is they say? Turn off the TV, turn off the mainstream media. That is a sewage opening of absolute mind control crap. You know, take your kids away from that whole thing and free yourself get closer to nature get off grid get back to the way life should be exactly. mother nature is showing us it's showing us you know mother nature knows if we don't mess with her she's showing the way so the more we can get back to where we should be and also to you know empower ourselves in our immune system our bodies keep ourselves as healthy as possible then I would say that is the way because then also the, I think the more you purify your mind, the more you will be used for something good as yeah, well. Exactly. From whoever it is. Back to the is. roots, yeah. And individual action, human action, self-sovereign action. Um, and, you know, that's why I said, you know, free private cities, like, you know, go back to local economies, go back, you know, yeah. buy locally from the farmers, uh, yeah. create your own community. Would it be in El Salvador, in wherever? Yeah. I think this is the key. This is the key in, yeah. on every level. Would it be energy or transportation or money? You know, that's why, you know, we are such a huge proponent and, and fans of, of Bitcoin because it, it just decentralizes yeah. everything. Yeah, you know? it's fantastic. You know? And, and the beauty also, Kevin, I, I want to say that uh, on, if you are on the 4D train, the thing is that when you see someone else on the same train, I don't know if you know this, but you are friends like this. Boom. Right. Suddenly it's like, wow, check it out. I used to have problems finding friends. It's uh, They're all over. My God, you just meet, you see their eyes. Boom, there's one. Boom, there's another one. Yeah. And then the other ones knock gently on the door so you feel, no, sorry, you are on, on a different trip no judgment we're just on and sometimes it feels to me like we're going through some kind of a birth we're really being pushed through a birth canal and when you do you know they say as above so below if you look in a microscope how life is actually created it starts with they say one cell and then one day the cell says i'm going to separate into two and they just go and suddenly you got two so i would not be surprised if that is what we're going through on a on a massive scale that we're being and suddenly there will yeah. be two ways of of going through reality and we in the 4d reality will suddenly be out of this whole mayhem situation and just like oh my god this all of this was just for us to choose sides so that we can okay i'm on this side of the bubble i'm on this bubble and boop, and then we can create a beautiful beautiful future together we're like-minded instead of fighting for absolute nonsense and the people in 3d reality will finally be have gotten rid of these mad people that are saying all these weird stuff yeah. so maybe it's a win-win no, I totally relate with what you're saying, and and we have we've had some you know really beautiful encounters, experiences with people, with it be you know with the Bitcoin community outside Bitcoin, but you know the, 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 you 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 just sense it, you feel it. They have mm. the same value, the same ethos, the same mm. you know emotions and empathy and and and, and yeah and values. So uh, I don't want to take up too much time of you, Oli. Uh, is there anything coming up like uh, uh, books? Uh, 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 where can people you know find you or um, uh, subscribe to a newsletter or whatever you, you want to final thoughts yes thank you that's very kind of you it's like i'm being shut down right left and center there's not many platforms left because i'm so hateful they say so i don't know if that's part of my reality but uh, there you go anyway so uh i have a website called lightonconspiracies.com it is massive you can spend years there and in on this website, I try to control everything that is published there. As far as I know, is the truth. As far as I know, it is true. And uh, it's also because so many people are shut down. So I'm using it as a as a platform, like an umbrella, where other people that are being censored can come in. And we publish everything that they do under our cover because we've been attacked so many times that now we built hopefully something that can that can last i also i've been interviewed um, almost 1100 times uh, all of them are in the men i know in the membership area many 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 different areas and on the website what we try to do is create a platform that in whatever area may it be vaccines or chemtrails or health or or whatever it is we got all of these categories you just choose there will be hundreds of articles and whatever so it can be sort of like a place where people can come to and then from there go 
find whatever they're searching. That is my intention. And uh, my newsletter, thank you for mentioning it. It's, uh, uh, we're being hit very hard financially. So my newsletter is one of our um, ways of an income. I do it once a month. And in that also, there are the newsletter archives where you can go in and say, I'm trying to describe it as, as much possible detail. Do you know, look there, look there, look there, look for yourself. I'm not saying, I'm pointing it out. And then when people see, it's like, oh my God, I had, and then, you know, also all of these times that I predicted, you can find in the archives, this is when I said it, that's when it happened. This is when I said it, that's when it happened. That is a pretty good track record. So my, my last name has even become a verb, hashtag Damagado, hashtag Damagado, which is finding the clues to be able to stop this madness. So, well... And then uh, we've got a membership area. We've got, uh, we're doing webinars once a month. We, their podcast there. Uh, I mean, there's so much stuff on that uh, website. So please go there. And um, also I would very much like to finish with a prayer, if that's okay. Yes, I'm not religious, but yes. Uh, yes. I, I have this prayer that I really, really love. And it, uh, I try to live my life by it. And it goes like this. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. That is the entire universe, every single square centimeter, inch, whatever you want to call it, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who hurt us, especially the ones who hurt us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May the light of truth overcome all darkness, so victory to that light. Because... Do you know a Batman movie without a villain? What would that be? That would be dead boring. That would be somebody driving around in a weird costume, doing absolutely nothing, playing with his belly button. And there would be. So the thing is that in this matrix reality, I have no idea what we're living in. Apparently, we need these type of things to evolve. We have avoided looking ourselves in the mirror for a long time. Now somebody has been kind enough to stick a flamethrower up our butt saying you have to stand in whatever truths that you are willing to stand up for. This is a matter of indirectly life and death. So it's time now to show who are you? Do you want to be an absolute asshole? Or do you be want to be a, your own hero? Do you want to go this way? Do you want to be a torturer? Do you want to be a, uh, a prophet? Do you want to be an angel? Do you want to? We have all the options. We can. I can become the worst serial killer in Bali ever within the next fifteen minutes if I want. There's a kitchen out there. There's lots of people out there, but there's a choice, you know. And so, who are you? That's the question. And also, these absolute super assholes. The bigger the asshole, the better, better the teacher. Yeah. And so, yeah. super psychos like Kill Bill Gates and these and Hitlery and they are monumental in making us meet exactly of gaining yeah. coming to clearness yeah, what are we going to do yeah. without these challenges so indirectly on a spiritual level we have to thank them for taking Lovely. on a lot of bad karma yeah but but down on this level absolutely no <laughs> way am i going to say yes to whatever they push on us so yeah. bless them and fuck them and exactly uh, yeah that's about Ollie, it Ollie, it's really beautiful said and i think it's a really it's a, it's a consciousness evolution it's evolution of, of spirituality of, of 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 soul i think it's a it's a process of soul uh yeah and and everything else is physical materialistic and too much you know in this matter attached reality unfortunately which you know creates suffering and pain but i guess you know this is the only way we can evolve and learn from our own you know i don't know deceptions <laughs> and yeah so um uh, Ole, thank you so much for your for all your work for your legendary work and uh yeah hope to talk to you soon in the you know in six months or so <laughs> again for sure much love to your family and and uh, also please understand it's only hollywood who said that life is going to be beautiful and and uh, wonderful and uh, happy ever after life is a this is hardcore boot camp we came here for a reason we're Thank going you. through it <laughs> this is something we talked about i think recently you know why are we here on this planet you know this whole civilization is is there a purpose higher purpose but you know that's a, another totally other a deep rabbit hole so Oli, thank you so much again i'll talk to you soon okay super duper bye ciao over and out